to Relish. I am Allie. I am a nutritionist and a yoga teacher and author of the smoothie book and I'm here to talk to you every week about nutrition topics. Super excited about that. You can also buy the smoothie book on relish.com so check it out. So today we are going to be discussing the red bell pepper. So good. We're going to talk about what it is, we're going to talk about the history and some information about the red bell pepper, and then we're also going to be talking about the health benefits of red bell peppers, which there are several, and then we're going to make a really good recipe called spicy red pepper feta dip. It's going to be good. It's going to be really, really good. Okay, so... If you have any questions or comments, I love it when people join in on the conversation. So please add them to the chat and I will talk to you via chat. Okay, so welcome to the show. Really excited to be here. So let's talk red bell pepper. So first of all, we know there are lots of different kinds of bell peppers. There are green, there are yellow, there are orange, and there are red. And we're going to talk about red mostly today because it is the most nutritious. And I just wanted to highlight that even though the other ones are still good for us, this one has the most nutrition. So we're just going to highlight, or we're going to mostly talk about red bell pepper. Okay, so what is a bell pepper? A bell pepper is the name of the plant species capsicum anum and it is cultivated because of this wonderful bell-shaped fruit that, that it makes. And it comes in red, yellow, green, orange, sometimes purple. And if you noticed I said fruit, that is correct. It is technically, botanically a fruit, but we treat it as a vegetable because we cook it with savory things, usually. Uh, I do have a savory red bell pepper smoothie in the smoothie book that is very good. I have cayenne, or no, red pepper flakes in it, and it's really, really good. So you'll have to try it. Uh, okay, so what's the what are the differences between the peppers? Well, green bell peppers are unripe peppers. So that's why they have more of a bitter taste. They're not so sweet. Sometimes they don't have a lot of taste. So that's why... They are like that because they are not ripe. The other kinds, the yellow, the orange, the red, those are all ripe, just different versions, sometimes different ripeness levels, but mostly it is a, um, they are just different varieties. Okay, so like I said, like just like tomatoes, they pe bell peppers are technically fruits, but we treat them like vegetables, much more savory. Um, they come from the nightshade family, which if you haven't seen the nightshade episode that I did, I did it over a year ago. So check in the earlier episodes. It's a really good episode. I talk all about nightshades. So nightshades are potatoes, bell peppers, hot peppers, tomatoes, eggplant, and the belladonna flower. All of the flowers from these plants have a five petal flower. The belladonna is considered poisonous. So some people also avoid nightshades, mostly because there's an association with inflammation, but if that doesn't cause you inflammation in your life, they are perfectly fine. So, and so many other good health benefits in the bell pepper. Uh, let's see. So they're in the same, oh, and tobacco is also a nightshade. So in the same family as those. And let's see, they're also, so we know bell peppers, they're also known as sweet peppers. We'll talk about that in a little bit. So this is so interesting. So other peppers in this family, the capsicum family, are spicy. And they have a special compound in them. The capsaicin is what makes other peppers, like other red spicy peppers, it makes them spicy and it actually stimulates, the capsaicin actually stimulates the chemoreceptor nerve endings in our bodies, especially in the mu mucous membranes in our mouth, our nose, our eyes. Um, 
and makes it sting if you if the pepper has capsaicin in it. But bell peppers actually have a recessive gene that eliminates that spiciness. That's why they're sweet. So same family, but one gene is different, makes them sweet, makes the other one spicy. And I found out in my research, I thought this was so interesting, that most mammals are affected by that spiciness, but birds are not. So there we go. I don't know how they tested that out, but I guess they gave samples to all different kinds of animals, and that's what happened, and birds were not affected by it. So interesting, interesting, interesting. Uh, okay, so that's kind of the background on what bell peppers are, their families, who's related to them, all of that. Let's talk history. So bell peppers seem to, are they're native to Mexico, Central, and South America. They have found that they have, might, they have likely been domesticated in Mexico for 7,500 years. That is a long time. Uh, there are also prehistoric remains that show that people in Peru were also domesticating bell peppers a um, long time ago. And because of the name, so bell peppers, peppers in general, they're in one family. Black and white pepper is a totally different family, even though they share the same name. The black pepper and the white pepper and they're all different other kinds of peppers. They come from the Piper uh, nigrum family. And that's a totally different group or a different group of um, plants or spices, I guess. And if you haven't checked that episode out, I have a whole episode on black pepper, which is very interesting. I learned a lot from that research. So check that out as well. Okay, so when you cut open a bell pepper, I'm going to cut one open because I want, I like visual aids. So I have my pepper right here. I have a cutting board right here. You can't see it, but you'll be able to hear it. Slice, slice, slice. Okay. So, okay, let's see here. I'm going to take this off so you can see. Okay. So the inside of the bell pepper, this is nice. It has four sections. When you cut it open horizontally like this, you can see the thin walls uh, that divide the pepper into sections. Those are called lobes or cells. And seed companies that are selling seeds for you to plant bell peppers, they describe a well-shaped bell pepper as being blocky. So I get that. It looks like blocks. It totally looks like blocks. The blocky shape comes from this these divisions from the lobes and a good blocky pepper has three or four lobes. So this is a very good blocky pepper, <laughs> which makes them super good for stuffing. Uh, we're going to talk about that later, but stuffed bell peppers are just one of the most wonderful dishes possible. I'm going to have to make one of those soon. Uh, also really good if you slice them this way, uh, horizontally across to make rings. I don't know if you've ever tried this, but you can crack an egg in it, or put it in a pan, crack an egg into it, cook it that way, and it's so good and so fun. It's like a little contained egg. Uh, so, that's good. That makes a good pepper. So we've got a good pepper here. I also roasted a pepper earlier today that we are going to be using in the recipe. Doesn't that look nice? Super excited about that too. Okay, so I didn't know this either. Some bell peppers are dried and powdered, and that is what makes paprika. I guess I never really thought about what paprika was made from, but yes, it is made from red bell peppers often. Okay, so let's talk nutrition of bell peppers. So bell peppers are 94% water, so very hydrating, very good for us. 5% carbohydrate, and the remaining 1% is a mix of protein and fat. So very minimal protein and fat, mostly carb, but or of the three, protein, fat, carb, mostly carb, and largely water. 
So that's good. Hydrating. Hydrating vegetables are good. They're also a good source of vitamin C. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. I'm just doing an overview right now of the health benefits. And let's see, let's see, let's see. Uh, so the carbs that it does have are mostly sugars, uh, glucose, and fructose, which is why they taste sweet. But it's natural sugar, so it's all good. And so, like I said before, all of the bell peppers have some sort of nutritional benefits. It's just the red bell pepper has the most. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. So I did some nutrition analysis. I just wanted to talk about that with the bell pepper. So one bell pepper has about 32 calories, very low in calories, 0.2 grams of fat, so basically zero. Zero grams, zero milligrams of cholesterol. All vegetables are cholesterol free. You only get cholesterol from animal products. Uh, two milligrams of sodium, so basically zero. Uh, potassium, 189 milligrams. So that is, let's see, 5% of our daily needs. So good, good amount of potassium. Uh, carbs, about seven grams of carb. 1.4 grams of that is fiber, and one gram of protein, and 67% of our daily needs for vitamin A, and 325% of our daily needs for vitamin C, so very good source of vitamin C. Calcium, just about 1%, so it's something, and about 3% of our daily needs of iron, which is great, especially great for vegetables. So we'll talk about that in a little bit, but yeah, I was really, really happy to find that it was a good source of iron. Okay, so let's get into specifics because I like to hear about the specifics of vegetables and I hope you do too. Okay, so red bell peppers are a really great source of vitamins and minerals. I'm gonna list the vitamins and minerals and I'll talk a little bit about each one. Vitamin C, we talked about that, vitamin K, vitamin B6, potassium, vitamin A, and vitamin E. So let's rewind. Okay, so vitamin C, like we just said, we're getting way more than your daily needs for vitamin C, so that's great. And vitamin C helps with collagen production in our bodies. It's essential for healing wounds, forming connective tissue. It's an antioxidant, good for our immune system. Vitamin K is necessary for blood clotting and also for our bone health. Potassium, good for our blood pressure. Vitamin D6 is important in producing red blood cells. Oh, hey, Mary, how's it going? Welcome to the show. I hope you like red peppers. We're making a red pepper feta dip today. Uh, okay, vitamin A. Very high in, or good source of vitamin A, and our body it needs that for our eyes. We'll talk about it in a little bit. Also, vitamin A is an antioxidant, good for us. Vitamin E also is important for our immune system, and it keeps our blood vessels healthy. Very good, very good. So that is benefit number one, high in vitamins and minerals. Benefit number two, real bell Red bell peppers are a good source of antioxidants. We talked about the vitamin A and the vitamin C, but there are also other antioxidants. Capsanthin is one of the antioxidants. That's what makes it, I do, <laughs> good, good, I'm glad. I do too, and I always kind of forget about them. They're so good. Uh, okay, so the antioxidants that we find in red bell peppers, capsanthin, it's especially high in red bell peppers, that's what gives it the red color. So kind of the rule of thumb for vegetables, the more color, like deep green leafy vegetables or red bell peppers or uh, pumpkins and sweet potatoes, all that bright colors, all the brighter and deeper the color, the better. So the capsanthin is an antioxidant that's found in red bell peppers and that's what makes them healthy. 
And quercetin is also another compound found in red bell pepper that is an antioxidant and may help with inflammation and chronic conditions like heart disease and cancer. Benefit number three, I guess I should just do this because that looks like six. Okay, benefit number three. So the vitamin C that is in the red bell peppers is also very helpful in helping us absorb iron. And we know the red bell peppers have some iron in them too, so it's a win-win. The vitamin C helps us absorb the iron, the iron helps us our bodies, helps us avoid being anemic. And um, also, if you eat something that's high in iron, like red meat or legumes, or lentils, garbanzo beans, things like that, leafy green vegetables like kale and spinach, all of these things are great sources of iron. So if you're gonna have vitamin C, have it along, have some red bell pepper, it's a win-win. Okay, number four. Red bell peppers may improve our eye and our skin health largely because of the vitamin A and the beta carotene found in red bell peppers. They help our overall vision and eye health. And vitamin A can also be helpful in supporting our skin cells, healing wounds, and boosting our white blood cell growth. Also, the vitamin C is good for that too. Okay, number five. Red bell peppers are a good source of fiber. So one bell pepper has almost two grams, which is good. Good for our digestion, also the hydration in that, um, or the water content in the bell pepper is also good for our digestion, and also may help lower our cholesterol. Also a good thing. Number six, last but not least, but, or, uh, red bell peppers may help reduce inflammation. According to the Arthritis Foundation, Bell peppers may help reduce the risk of some of getting some sort of, some types of arthritis and other inflammatory health conditions because of the beta cryptoxanthin, which is an antioxidant, and also the vitamin C content. And they also may help protect our bone and cartilage cells because of the high vitamin C content, which is also good for our joints and good for reducing inflammation. So. Lots of good health benefits with red bell peppers. We need to eat more. Okay, so which cuisines include bell peppers? There are so many cuisines that include bell peppers. I'm gonna highlight one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight cuisines, but I'm sure there are more. Okay, so the Mediterranean um, culture uh, and Greek culture, they do a lot with bell peppers. Stuffed peppers are especially delicious with like rice and lamb or ground beef, garbanzo beans. It's like a complete meal. Add a little feta or cheese on top, super good. Mexican food also has red bell peppers in it. Sliced onions, bell peppers, sauteed fajitas. Also stuffed peppers are uh, part of Mexican cuisine. French food, the piperid, Pipperid, which is a combination of peppers, onions, and tomatoes, is part of French cooking. Bell peppers. Uh, Puerto Rican sofrito, which is a combination of bell peppers, onions, garlic, olives, and herbs. Roughly chopped, slightly pureed. Super good. Spanish food. Uh, Spanish tapas often include roasted red bell peppers. Ukrainian Russian food. Ha, they include marinated red bell peppers. Nigerian food, they make a red pepper and tomato sauce, which is very common. And Chinese food, bell peppers, other veggies are often stir fried by themselves or with chicken or other meats, and they're also included. How is the, what is the best way to store red bell peppers? In the vegetable drawer, in the refrigerator, keeps them well, really well. So that's the best way to store them. That's kind of all we have on the topic of red bell peppers to discuss. Now let's make this delicious dip. Okay, it's from, you can find it on relish.com. I put it, I put the link, let's see here. Hopefully you can see it. Sometimes I get feedback that you can see it. 
I'm going to add it again. And sometimes I think if I add it before the show, you can't see it. Okay. There we go. You can find it on relish.com. And the blog, the blogger that has developed this recipe is called Cookie and Kate. She has lots of really good recipes. Okay. So I'm going to move my chair. Oh, I have to plug the... I'm going to talk to you while I go back here. I have to plug the um, hand blender in. Forgot to do that. Okay. So let's keep that there. Okay, so I'm going to talk first about how I made this roasted red bell pepper. So basically, you turn your oven on broil and move the uh, top rack as close to the broiler as you can, but not too close so that you can't put the bell pepper in there because <laughs> I ran into that. I put it at the highest. My bell pepper was too big, so I had to lower the rack. My broiler isn't super great, so I had to roast mine under the broiler for probably 20 to 30 minutes, but if you have a good broiler, you just put your pepper on a pan, roast it for however long, maybe five minutes, and go check it and see if it's charred, and then flip it over, use some tongs, flip it over, do the other side, make sure everything has been charred. So, and it, like it's gotten, like the pepper has really softened too. So. Every oven is different. It, it took me kind of a long time, but it finally worked. And then take it out of the oven carefully, put it in a plastic bag, Ziploc bag, seal it, and then the steam in there helps to pull the skin away from the pepper. So I kept it mine in there for, I don't know, 20 minutes. It doesn't have to be that long. 20 minutes or so, carefully open the bag in case it's still hot inside and peel the skin off, take the stem off, take the seeds out, and you've got your roasted red bell pepper. So that's what I did today. This is the outcome. You can also buy roasted red bell peppers in a jar. If you're short on time, same flavor, same taste, and you save yourself a lot of time. So you can also do that. We've got options. Okay, so. We are going to put that bell pepper in, you can use a food processor, you can use a blender. I like to use this little hand blender because it's a small jar and it's, we're gonna just be using a small amount of oil and everything like that. So, which reminds me, excuse me everybody, I gotta grab my olive oil. Okay, sorry about that. Okay, so we're gonna put our red, roasted red bell pepper in our food processor, hand blender, whatever you are going to be using. Okay, so we've got that there. Next, we're gonna do feta. So let's see, one eight ounce. Okay, I've got my recipe right here. Okay, so we're gonna put the feta in. So one eight ounce block of feta cheese, pat it dry and cut into chunks. Okay, so. Here we are. This is gonna be so good. I have some pita chips and carrots for us to dip in this delicious dip. I'm really excited. Okay, dry my hands a little bit. Okay, what's next? A fourth of a cup of extra virgin olive oil. This is currently the olive oil that I use. It is a Sicilian extra virgin olive oil. Okay. So I don't have a measuring cup, but I can gauge the fourth of a cup pretty well. Okay, there we go. Can always add more. Okay, and next, one tablespoon lemon juice. I've got my lemon, and this is my lime juicer, but the lemon's pretty small, so we can put it in the lime juicer. Alrighty, there we go. And what's next? A fourth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper. This is gonna be spicy. If you have kids in the household that you don't want um, to give a lot of spice to, you can totally skip this. I don't think that the kid in our household would like this dip, so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the cayenne in. Okay, 
Let's see what else. And freshly ground black pepper. I'm just going to skip that part. And crushed red pepper flakes for garnishing. So we are ready to puree. Okay, let's move these flowers. Aren't these so pretty? These are from our garden. Raphael, my husband, grows the dahlias and gives me these really nice flower displays. Okay, so we've got our hand blender. I'll put it back here so you can see it a little bit better. Let's blend. So the recipe says to not make it super pureed, like probably not as smooth as hummus, to have a little bit of the feta chunks still in there. So I'm just gonna kind of pulse. on my Instagram the pictures of it but let's give it a little taste oh my goodness that is good that is really 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 good just the right amount of heat you can feel it mm. yeah you can feel it in the uh, the aftertaste for sure has a good amount of heat I'm gonna put my Instagram in case you don't follow me at Allie Shercliffe. It's at Ali Shercliffe. And this is where you can find a picture of the final product. Even though I did just show you, but I'm going to show you it with the chips and the um, carrots and everything and just how it turns out. It is really, really good. Mm. We're having roasted tomato soup tonight with a side of roasted garbanzo beans and roasted garlic with some bread. This is going to be really good on the bread too. Nice Mediterranean meal. Some wine. Delicious. Okay, everybody. Thank you so much for joining the show today. Check out my Instagram tomorrow or this week for pictures. And oh, <laughs> thanks, Marion. Yeah, super, super good. You'd like it. Okay. Go to relish.com for the recipe. Go to relish.com for the smoothie book. Check it all out. Have a great rest of your day. Talk to you soon. Okay, bye.